Um, we started the courses um, essentially to build a better pilot originally. So for any student that wanted to go in and be an airline pilot, um, this would allow them to also get a degree at the same time. Uh, and spend three years training to fly an aeroplane and also getting a university degree to understand the sort of the business aspects of aviation. Um, and then we broadened out about 20 years ago into saying, well, actually, there's a whole lot of complexity on the ground. In fact, it's probably more complexity on the ground in operating an airline and all the functions that go with that. Um, and so we then have this aviation management degree, which is shares a lot of commonality with the aviation degree, but it's its own, its own thing. And that's a very exciting degree for anybody that doesn't want to be in the flight deck of an aeroplane, but wants to be involved in the operation of an airline or an airport on the ground. Um, so those are basically our two bachelor um, degree programs. Both of those degrees can be um, studied as a double degree with Bachelor of Business as well. And the Aviation Management degree can even be studied as a double degree with Bachelor of Laws. And that's really for people that want to go into sort of the regulatory side of aviation. Because aviation is bound by a huge set of international rules and regulations. I think that's probably one of the most important things to say about aviation is how exciting it is because it's a global industry. Um, there's a chance, and Ella will talk to you about this because she's probably seen more of the global industry than me, um, but there is a chance to go and work anywhere in the world. Um, also, it's it's a dynamic industry. It's not, an, especially on the ground as well, it's, it, I think it's obvious and there's an obvious excitement to being in the flight deck of an airliner, but even on the ground it's exciting. It's not just like going and sitting in an office for seven or eight and nine hours at a time or 12 hours at a time. It's actually like you're in a you're in an action center. There's everybody's working. It's all frenetic. Um, there's big decisions being made. It's very complex. You really feel like you've earned your money at the end of the day. So no, it's, a, it's an interesting industry. Um, yeah. Great. Thanks for that. And now, despite global setbacks like the one we're in at the moment, uh, aviation is always going to be an extremely relevant industry, chartering thousands of people across the world every single day. Um, can you maybe touch on some of the career opportunities that students um, can follow uh, with a degree in aviation? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also um, a really good point to pick up on the fact that we are going through a bit of a uh, an interesting time in aviation in the world at the moment, so I'll come on to that as well. But the the main career outputs really from these two degrees are the first one from the aviation uh, bachelors is to be a professional pilot and by professional pilot we mean not just flying as a hobby flying to earn money um, and eventually that might be in the seat of a big jet airliner like a 747 or an Airbus A380 but initially that's probably going to be either as a flying instructor or as a um, working for an air taxi operator or as a charter operator or maybe even as a person um, taking up parachutists before working with the smaller regional airlines. So that's the sort of, the starting point is at the uh, sort of the smaller aircraft end of the industry. Um, out on the management program, the aviation management program, it is a whole set of careers. And I think that's what's so exciting about the degree is that it's not, you can build the career direction that you want whilst you're with us for three years. Um, predominantly, most of our students tend to go out into what is called a, a network operations control center. Um, so that is like the heart of an airline, that's a room, that's the pressure room, that's the room where all of the decisions are made to keep the aeroplanes in the air on the day and there's, there's lots of roles within that which all sort of tie together so there are crewing specialists, so people that work with the various crew, like the pilots and the cabin crew to make sure they're there with the aeroplane, there are load specialists to make sure that the aeroplane doesn't tip up, um, that it's, it's not carrying too much weight. There are cargo forwarding specialists and, and all sorts of payload specialists to make sure that we've got we're earning money from the flight and that we're actually um, um, selling the volume, the seats and the cargo capacity of the aeroplane. There are people that liaise with air traffic control and people that liaise with the airports, uh, people that manage the turnaround, people that plan the flights and, uh, and make sure that the aeroplanes are navigating correctly across the world and then follow them as they do so and help them if they get into any difficulties. And then there's obviously the longer term sort of positions in the in management where you're looking at sort of building up the strategic, um, the marketing direction of an airline or, or selling its tickets across the world or wherever that might be. So there are lots of jobs. There are lots and lots of different um, uh, pathways to go down. And we're, we're fortunate in Australia, I think, that we've, got, we've still got a lot of strong airlines with big network operation centers. And especially in Melbourne, we've got Jetstar just down the road. Um, and a lot of our students in the management program do initially go to Jetstar, often working in a really high tempo job, 
from day one in the network operations center making some really significant decisions so it's good I think from the two sides of the house from the aviation flying side obviously the the piloting students um, their world's very different to a normal uh, undergraduate program they spend half of their time at our local training airfield at Moorabbin Airport in Melbourne um, rather than being at the university and they spend half their time in an aeroplane flying around Victoria so that's quite a different learning environment for them um, but equally with the with the management side of the house as well it, it's more conventional in the fact that most of the face-to-face -face teaching is at uh, Swimbers Hawthorne campus but we also try and uh, contextualize the course as much as possible so um, Students have got the opportunity to go on a study tour, which takes them around the world, uh, popping into all sorts of places. I was lucky enough in 2015 to convene. Uh, that will be one of the conveners, so I got to go around the world with the students. And as a, an absolute aviation geek through and through, I think I got to go to Airbus and I got to go to Boeing, which I was quite excited about. I went to touch a 787, uh, a British Airways 787 as well, which is, obviously being a Brit myself, was really exciting. Um, but just on the, on a smaller scale as well we try and take the students as much as possible out onto site so there are opportunities to go to the airport and go to air services sometimes but also bring industry into the classroom so some of the units are actually taught by industry professionals in fact quite a lot of the units have got a great deal of current industry professionals coming and teaching it includes big um big named airline pilots um also air traffic air traffic uh, management providers um, but we also run simulations in the class as well. We have a aircraft simulation laboratory where the, um, all of the students, management and flying, get the opportunity to um, do some maintenance on a Cessna 172 aeroplane themselves, get hands on with it. Um, right down to doing sort of operations simulation where we'll get the day of um, operation schedule out and uh, throw an interruption like an aeroplane's gone tech and you've got to in real time work out how you're going to solve that problem. And at some stage, you get to run your own airline business for a unit as well. You get to compete on the uh, in global environment and try and run your own airline and see if you can make the best airline. The qualifications we get from Swinburne beat any other option. So we get a commercial parts license. We set our air transport parts license. We get a bachelor and then you also get a high graduate certificate of piloting. And on top of that, you get to operate out of Moorabbin, which is one of like the world's best training airports. Everyone in aviation just is so obsessed with it that we can all bond over how much we love flying. Everyone always says if you can fly out of Moorabbin, you can fly out of anywhere because it's so hectic, but you become accustomed to it and it becomes normal. So then when you go to other airports, it seems so simple and slow compared to Moorabbin. If you get used to that, you can operate anywhere. With aerobatics, the feeling is insane. You're there inverted upside down and you think, wow, this is pretty cool. It's such a cool thing to be 18 years of age and fly New South Wales and your friends go like, oh, uni was such a drag today. It's a really awesome thing to do.